purposes is to make the resources of space available to humanity both in space and here on Earth. We have the ability to turn that which is scarce into abundant, and so now is the time that we need it most. In the last decade, planetary resources has been followed by space mining companies like New Space Industries, Moon Express, Honeybee Robotics, and then countries like the US, Canada, Russia, China, and Japan. China has already launched its first space mining spacecraft, and Japan has already landed on asteroid Yugu with their Hayabusa 2 spacecraft. Peter believes that if we mine in space, we can stop mining on Earth. And over the last 10 years, his X prizes have been focused as solutions to world's biggest challenges, including the $100 million carbon capture X prize he just launched, funded by Elon Musk. I met Peter Demandis this month, and we hung out in zero gravity in another of his ventures, Zero G. <laughs> G-Force One has given thousands the experience of zero gravity, including Stephen Hawkins, Richard Branson, Elon Musk, and others. And when we got back down to Earth, I asked Peter where the space race was going, and here's what he said. Phase one is bases on the moon, happening by 2025. NASA's Artemis moon mission to create a base on the moon was meant to happen by 2024, but just got pushed back to 2025 because of delays that Jeff Bezos caused. His company, Blue Origin, sued NASA for giving SpaceX the contract for the lunar landers, and that's the case they just lost. So progress is now moving fast, and with SpaceX planning to launch a Starship in January after many tests of the Super Heavy rocket, and the Starship rocket. This will be the biggest spacecraft ever launched with the capacity to carry the levels of cargo and humans needed to build manned bases on the moon and Mars, carrying up to 100 people at a time. And that won't be the only base. Russia and China have also just announced plans for a base, as have the Open Lunar Foundation. How will they build these bases? That's where phase two and space mining comes in. Where there's an astronomical amount of wealth and psyche, that's just the beginning. As Peter says, there's an abundance of asteroids in our solar system, which can be mined for everything we need to build space bases and space stations, including the water needed for life and rocket fuel. And this leads to phase three, space colonization. Elon's timeline is now for the first mission to Mars to be by 2024, and his first manned trip to Mars by 2026. And he's sticking with his plan to build an entire city on Mars by 2050. Jeff Bezos, on the other hand, isn't focused on Mars, but instead on building space colonies. Because Jeff's been inspired by physicist Jared O'Neill and is designed for rotating space cylinders called O'Neill Colonies. In Jeff's talk, Going to Space to Benefit Earth, he played an interview with Jared O'Neill and science fiction writer Isaac Asimov. This is Professor O'Neill, the guy who, with his students, came up with the idea of what's now called O'Neill colonies and the famous science fiction author Isaac Asimov being interviewed about these colonies and Asimov gets asked a very good question which is did anybody in science fiction ever predict this and if not why not and he has a very good answer watch this did you anticipate anything like this in any of your science fiction nobody did really because we've all been planet chauvinists we've all believed people should live on the surface of a planet of a world I've had colonies on the moon, so have a hundred other science fiction writers. The closest I came to a manufactured world in free space was to suggest that we go out to the asteroid belt and hollow out the asteroids and make ships out of them. It never occurred to me to bring the material from the asteroids in towards the Earth, where conditions are pleasanter, and build the worlds there. So this all sounds like science fiction, but it's becoming science fact. So what do you think? Will the Winkfoss twins be right, and will Elon tow this 10,000 quadrillion dollar rock back to Earth and destroy our economy and humanity as we know it? Or will he use his rock to build his Mars city and space colonies and help humanity? Do post your thoughts on the comments below. So you get the idea here that at that point when I did this video, which was in November, it's very, like, look at what has happened since I actually did that video. First of all, um, you can see here that, like, you know, there is now a space race where China has taken the lead against the U.S., and this is, like, this is a big concern, obviously, for the U.S., but it's actually as a result of that, the U.S. are starting to do more and more partnerships. So while, on the one hand, you've got the likes of Starship, which is now about to take off in January, which is, like you heard, 100 people, 100 people can, can actually be on this thing. Uh, this is basically going to be testing all the way through next year. Um, and as that's happening, NASA has just done a deal with Jeff Bezos, which is for not just the Artemis Space Camp, which is the one that Jeff tried to sue for Tesla having, but just actually did a deal with him uh, for his new orbital reef. Now, if you're wondering, well, what is orbital reef? It's the very first step of the space colonies. 
and this just came out, like you can see here, this was just published like the first time in October, um, and I'm just going to show you the first part of this, so you, and I'm going to show you the implications of what it means that this is actually taking place right now, that they're actually going to have, uh, this is, by the way, is not Orbital Reef in terms of uh, just the place to live in, it's actually a place also where you can have a hotel, it's where you have industry happening as well, but look at this here, your address in orbit, we're going to have DAOs, we're going to have metaverse uh, worlds that are going to be having their servers on this, which means no government can actually be in charge. And you'll listen to the way they talk about it. They're saying this is not under the jurisdiction of any uh, country. Now, by the way, um, this already exists. Like if you're uh, 50 kilometers off any coast, you're already in international waters. If you're in international waters, then you already effectively can create your own country. Um, so there are there's an entire uh, organization that Peter Thiel funded, which is called Seasteading. Seasteading is the concept um, basically of uh, how you can uh, create your own country uh, as a floating uh, country out uh, in uh, open waters. Uh, and as a result of that, you can actually you know, create your own taxes, your own, uh, uh, your own rules, everything like that, and no country can stop you from doing it. The only challenge with that is that because it's like out in the waves, you've got to figure out like what's the best way and the best structure to do it. If you want to connect with the rest of the world, it's not easy to do. However, um, the reason that Blue Origin is called this orbital reef is they're saying, well, we're offshore, but we're actually offshore up in space. Uh, and you can see here NASA is now backing it as basically like a replacement for its International Space Station. So we're going to see many, many, many of these like in, a, in the coming years. But let's just have a look so you can kind of see the view of what it looks like for Orbital Reef here. There have been dreams for a very long time of robust commercial activities in space with growing populations and so forth. Now we have access to systems that cost less to launch and land, and we now understand how to build destination systems that last for a long time. It's the commercial world in which advanced capabilities get normalized and become a part of everyday life. Orbital Reef is a full-fledged commercial space station. Think of it as a village. Think of it as many different organizations and people in their own parts of Orbital Reef doing their own activities. Where all types of companies can come together and do research and or production and also provide opportunities for tourists to come and just experience what space is like. It's an ecosystem that will allow ideas to grow, to germinate, whole new fields and areas of economic arena, new science that we can't even imagine now. Orbital Reef starts with two strategic partners, Blue Origin and Sierra Space. These two together have the fundamental elements that give us both transportation of cargo and crew and the destination system essentials. In addition, we have a set of expert teammates, which includes Bali, who will be developing our research module. Uh, we'll be providing crew and cargo transportation with the Starliner. And when the orbital reef is operational, we'll provide all of the operations and maintenance uh, necessary to sustain the orbital reef. Genesis, who are developing the single-person spacecraft for soupless extravehicular activity. ASU is going to bring together this international group of 14 universities to work with Orbital Reef on the ethics and guidelines of research, on how we can bring to bear all of our expertise. And Redwire, who provide in space manufacturing. Leveraging the microgravity environment to push new science, new discoveries, and new commercial applications. We're working very hard to make sure that Orbital Reef is not just for the entities that have had access to space so far. It's intended to be humanity's footprint in Earth orbit, and that means all the nations and companies and peoples of the world. So that last part, which is all about basically the fact that it's like for all countries and all places, and the fact that you're going to be able to have your own address in orbit. Uh, that means that you are not going to be like linked to any particular country. Uh, you're not going to be like stuck with your the splinter net or any of those things we talked about earlier. 
um, this is a really key component to all of this as well. And exactly as Jason says, you can see how these different things all link together. Uh, because if you didn't have a place where you actually could house that metaverse, if you didn't have a way you could actually get into like satellite internet everywhere, uh, we would be in a situation where we're still stuck under our own government. But by like thinking, okay, someone in China that wants to trade cryptocurrency could easily have a company which is actually housed at uh, Orbital Reef, where they could actually be trading cryptocurrencies and be in the metaverse and build an entire 